Welcome everyone. Good afternoon. I want to welcome everyone to Artists Against Anti-Asian Violence. Thank you for joining us here today afternoon. My name is Jenny Leung. I'm the Executive Director of Chinese Culture Center. I want to welcome everyone to this space virtually and to Chinatown. Um, this has been such a difficult time for our community. Our hearts go out to all the victims and the families and all the trauma that they have experienced from anti-hate Asian hate and violence. Um, and during these difficult times, we are heartened to be able to do this work to uplift the voices of artists and the Asian community. And together we can create a more beautiful world. Um, we have an amazing, wonderful program um, here today. I'd just like to share a little bit about the Chinese Culture Center. We are a community-based nonprofit arts organization um, located in Chinatown with a mission to elevate the underserved and be a voice for equality. Uh, we are a loud and creative voice to uplift social and economic transformation, providing a safe environment for artists who champion activism, resiliency, and healthy communities. I want to first and foremost thank and give a huge shout out to Start Small for their major support in kickstarting the We the Future initiative um, to work with artists on social justice and transformation and empower change. It is a deep investment in Chinatown in our Asian American community and is a big game changer. Um, thank you, Matthew Godot, for being here today. Um, artists Against Anti-Asian Violence is part of Chinese Culture Center's We the Future series. We want to thank the San Francisco Foundation and all of our supporters that are here. Um, all of you are donors for supporting um, to produce this and our upcoming program to combat hate and advocate for social equality. I want to give a shout out to um, our board members who are here um, supporting this program. Cynthia Tongson, Helen Hui, our board emeritus, um, Mei Lam. Um, also in the house today, um, I see uh, former Board of Supervisors Eric Marr, um, San Francisco Arts Commissioner Deborah Walker, uh, Joanne Lee with also the Arts Commission, um, our supporter com uh, from the Community Challenge Grant, Lenita Henriquez from Grants for the Arts, Jason Blackwell. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy Saturday to be with us and support this. And we are so incredibly proud to co-present this event with the amazing Chun Yu and Michael War through their Two Languages, One Community Project the first in a series of solidarity events being organized by Chun and Michael. Two languages, one community uses writing and translation to exchange culture and life experiences between African-Americans and Chinese speakers. They believe that sharing stories and language facilitates understanding, connection, and support. Um, I'm so proud to welcome and feature poets and musicians here today, Maxine Hong Kingston, Jenny Lim, Michael War, Afa Weaver, Al Young, Chun Yu, musician Tammy L. Hall, and visual artist Aranjin An Wang. And I just also want to shout out to San Francisco Poet Laureate Deborah Major, who is here with us today. Um, this is the time to support and uplift Asian Pacific Islander voices. We're so proud that Chinatown has a longstanding history of being a safe space for all communities. And we're continuing to build this work today. Um, amidst all of the tragedies, um, we must not forget that Chinatown has been hit deeply hard this year and we still need your support. I wanna welcome and invite everyone to show love and support to the community and take a stand against racism. Um, join us here um, in community are our amazing co-sponsors for the event, the Asian Art Museum, API Cultural Center, Kearney Street Workshop, the Museum of the African Diaspora, Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, Yerba Buena Gardens Festival, Soma Arts Cultural Center, New Conservatory Theater Center, and Poets and Muses podcast. I know um, there are some folks from um, our co-sponsors that are here today. I wanna to also um, give them a shout out. John Moscone, Vinay Patel, Melanie Elvina, Marnie Cook, Jennifer Cow, and Jay Shu. Um, and I wanna invite everyone to come out to APA Heritage Month programming produced by the Chinese Culture Center um, Women, Woman exhibition is currently on view um, where our spaces are physically open. I wanna invite everyone to make an appointment or to um, walk in. May 12th, we'll be pre uh, presenting, preserving and uplifting trans and queer API stories an interactive zine making workshop, um, uplifting API queer voices um, with API equality, Northern California, and invite everyone to um, May 20th um, 
Chinese Cultural Center's Harmony and Bliss Gala. And I'm going to pass it off to Michael and Chun, um, but I'd like to introduce them first. Uh, Chun is a PhD, the author of the multi-award winning memoir, Little Green, published by Simon & Schuster, and a historical graphic novel in progress and more. San Francisco poet Michael War is the 2020 Berkeley Lifetime Achievement Awardee. His books include of poetry and po protest from Emmett Till to Trayvon Martin, the Armageddon of Funk, and we are all the black boy. Please welcome Chun Yu and Michael War. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for such a wonderful introduction. And uh, thanks to the Chinese Culture Center for co-creating this important and exciting event of solidarity with us. Thank you, all, thank you to all the audience for choosing to be here on this fine Saturday. And thanks to the group of extraordinary poets and artists from our Asian and African American communities. Uh, and also the nine great cultural institutes and organizations for joining uh, CCC and our two language one community project uh, in solidarity against um, racism and against um, violence of all kinds. And we are really moved beyond words. This is an extremely challenging time for our communities a time of many crises. However, in Chinese, the word crisis, wei ji, has two characters. The first character, wei, means danger. The second character, ji, means opportunity. As difficult and dangerous the time is, we must take this opportunity to unite and build a better future. We see this event as a great opportunity. Our Two Languages, One Community project began soon after poet Michael War and I met in the Friends of San Francisco Public Library's poetry reading series, uh, which was hosted by poet laureate Jack Hirschman. We were both poets featured by the series, and uh, I translate some of Michael's poems into Chinese, and he also read uh, drafts of my poems in English we learned a great deal about each other's culture and immediately decided to build the project to connect our communities. And the, the Chinese Culture Center has been one of our most important collaborators and supporters. And we hope together we will make this a time of solidarity and a time that leads us to a better future. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Chun. It seems like it was only like, I don't know, a month or so ago that you and I decided we needed to do this. And it's great to see it um, come to fruition. So today we're calling for and we're practicing solidarity. And through our um, writing, we are showing that we care for each other, that we will come to each other's defense. And while I see poetry as an act in itself, I know that it's not enough on its own. We must all join forces with multiple acts against hatred and violence. And the Two Languages, One Community Project supports and joins activity and offers our bilingual art um, as part of the struggle for justice and peace. I also wanna add that I'm sure many of you here um, are here to hear, hear Al Young. You saw his name in the promo. And Al's been very, very ill and I want you to know that uh, we are expecting his son, Michael Young, to recite Al's poems in, 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 in English. Um, but first, um, before we get to the poetry, we want to start with some music from the great Tammy L. Hall, who will perform musical interludes between the poem. And I just want to um, share a little bit about Tammy's art in her background. She's worked with vocalist Etta Jones, with Linda Tillery, and the Cultural Heritage Choir with Kim Nally, with Tiffany Austin, the Supreme Mary Wilson, violinist Regina, Regina Carter and Lori Anderson, as well as orchestra leader and bassist Mark Shelby. She received the award for best musical direction from the Bay Area Theater Critics Circle in 2017. And in 2019, the San Francisco Human Rights Commission honored Tammy as a 
recipient of its inaugural Pleasant Les Desdorf San Francisco Community Stalwart Award. She is this year's inaugural artist in residence for Hansburg Jazz. So let's hear from Tammy. And thank you so much for being here, Tammy. Michael, thank you so much, and, and thank you, everyone. It's, um, it's an honor to be here, and, and it's horrible to have to be here, that we have to, again, <laughs> I actually have no words, really, but what I can tell you is this. Love is still in the picture. Love is still the thing that will save us if we allow it. Love is the thing that brings us all together right now, not fear and not hatred. Love is the thing that those people who would choose to hate and act out that hate in violence against, against Asian, Asian Islander, Pacific, against black people, against all people of color, those people who choose to act out this way are severely lacking and need love. We may be the ones who will have to show them what that is. We may be the ones who will have to give it to them. So that's a daily challenge. It's a daily challenge, and I say that because I say it to myself <laughs> every day. I am challenged to be able to bring love to the table when it's not even wanted. We're challenged to do that and I want you to know that I do stand in solidarity with you for that and that love is in the room today. This is a song that I wrote and it's called Only Love. And I just want you to think of these words. This is the chorus. Only love is what matters. Only love is real. Only love can heal us. Only love, only love. <laughs> Thank you, Tammy. Um, so Maxine, we're gonna hear next from Maxine hong Wilson, And she has earned uh, many awards for her memoirs, fiction, and poetry, including the National Book Award, 
the National Book Critics Circle Award and Living Treasure of Hawaii. Her titles include The Woman Warrior, Chinaman, Tripmaster Monkey, The Fifth Book of Peace, I Love It Brought March Into My Life in Hawaii One Summer. And President Clinton gave her the National Humanities Medal and President Obama gave her the National Medal of Arts. Please welcome Maxine Huntington. Thank you. I'm going to read a poem that I dedicate to emigrants and immigrants and refugees everywhere. The name of the poem is On The Way, and that's a capital T in the, On The Way. Once I was on an airplane beside a village girl in the window seat. At takeoff, I asked her, where are you going? Wah! She shouted in surprise and grabbed a hold of my hand. You speak like me. Yes, I speak Sayup language. Are you from the village? No, my mama and papa came from Sayup villages. They left for New York. They lived in New York, then California. I was born in California. I feel like a child, younger than this girl. I'm telling about parents as, as if I still had them. I'm talking in my baby language. Wah, she exclaimed, loud as though yelling across fields. I am going to New York. I am meeting my husband in New York. He's waiting for me in New York. He works in a restaurant. He's rented a home. He sent for me and waits for me. She did not let go of my hand. I held her as tightly as we flew the night sky. She looked in wonder at webs of lights below. Red, red, green, green, she said. Red, red, green, green, my mother used to say, meaning, oh, how pretty. The lights were white and yellow too, and gold, blue, copper, and above, stars and stars. Mother, Mama, as you leave the village family, you'll never see again. Grandfather walked her as far as he could walk, stood weeping in the road until she could not see him anymore when she turned around to look. Oh. Excuse me, I gotta get some Kleenex, just a minute. Oh. Excuse me. Oh. Well, I, I've got to tell you, I, I've been crying. I've been crying for months and every day, every day I've been crying. This is so not like me. And uh, 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 it's a, uh, th this has been happening. Uh, I, I, it must be all these events that are going on. But uh, I, every day this just comes. Oh, okay. Mother, Mama, as you leave the village family, you'll never see again. Grandfather walked her as far as he could walk, stood weeping in the road until she could not see him anymore when she turned around to look. She's off to that lonely country from where he had returned broke. I felt that I was dying. Mama, girl, you are not traveling alone. I'm traveling with you here, holding your hand. I know that country you're leaving for and shall guide you there. I know your future. 
I'm your child from the future. Your husband will certainly meet you. Baba will be at the East Broadway station. You will recognize each other, though he be dressed modern Western style. You will have a good life, a good, good life. You will have many children and live a long, long life. You will be lucky. You are lucky. Your husband has work. He's rented an apartment and made you a home. He saves money. He bought your plane ticket. He will be waiting for you at the airport. She listened to the wise old woman teaching her, but how to instruct anyone the way to make an American life, how to have a happy marriage. For a long time in the dark, dozing, dreaming, thinking, we sat without speaking, without letting go of warm hands. The red, red, green, green appeared again. I told her, that's Japan. We're over Japan now. We'll be landing soon in Narita. Wow, you speak Japanese too. She admires me too much. Inside the horrible confusion of the international airport, how can a mind from the village not fall to crazy pieces? I found a nice American couple making the connecting flight to New York and asked them please to take this Chinese girl to the right gate. She thanked me. She said, goodbye, see you again, Joy Kin. She did not look back, good. Gotta go, things to do, people to meet, places to be. Thank you so much, Maxine. That was lovely. And, um, you know, we need more tears because that, that shows our humanity. So, you know, we, um, we, you, we, we love what, what you just shared with us. Maxine, thank you so much for trust your deeply moving poem to me. And I, I feel, you are holding all of our hands and you're holding my hands ever since we met through Little Green. And uh, I'm honored to translate your poem. And so here I give everybody the Chinese version um, of uh, On the Way. 在途中, 我乘坐在飞机上, 你要去哪里? 哇! 他惊讶地大喊, 然后抓住我的手, 你说话和我一样, 是的, 我说的是四意乡话, 你是从四意乡来的吗? 不是, 我的爸爸妈妈来自四意的村庄, 他们去了纽约, 住在纽约, 然后去了加州, 我出生在加州, 我觉得自己像个孩子, 比这个女孩还年轻他让我来也都是白色和黄色的直到妈妈回头再也看不到他了 
破产而归的寂寞的国家。我觉得我正在死去。妈妈，女孩，你不是一个人旅行，我和你一起在途中，在这儿牵着你的手。我知道。你要去的那个国家，并会指引你到那里。我知道你的未来，我是你未来的孩子，你的丈夫一定会和你相会。爸爸会在百老汇东站等你，虽然他穿着洋装，我们还是会认出对方。你将有很好很好的生活。你将有很多孩子，并且活得很长很长。你会很幸运，你很幸运。你的丈夫有工作，他租了一套公寓，给你安了一个家。他省下了钱，他给你买了机票，他会在机场等你。他听着这个有智慧的老妇人来教导他。但是，如何指教任何一个人去过美国的生活？如何有快乐的婚姻？在黑暗中长长的打瞌睡、做梦、思考，我们坐着不说话，不放开温暖的手。红红绿绿再次出现，我告诉他，那是日本。我们现在在日本，我们即将在成田机场降落。哇、wow, ，你还会说日语？他太过崇拜我了。在可怕混乱的国际机场，一个来自乡村的头脑，不得疯了吗？我发现一对转机飞往纽约的和善的美国夫妇，请他们带着这个中国姑娘来到正确的登机口。他感谢我，他说：“拜拜，下次再见。”再见，他没有回头。好，得走了，要做的事，要见的人，要去的地方。Thank you. Did you have anything else for us, Maxine? No, that's it. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Jun.、Um, so now we're going to hear from Jenny Lin. And what I was about to say is that、um, this is the second weekend that、uh, Jenny and I are reading together, and、uh, so she heard my emotion last last week, and so I just you know want to share that、um, we all bring that with us sometimes. So Jenny is a San Francisco jazz poet laureate at, at、um, Emerius. And、um, she was born and raised in San Francisco to immigrant parents from the Quantum region of Toisan. And her poetry jazz work, "Don't Shoot: Requiem in Black," dedicated to Black Lives Matters,、uh, pre premiered at SF Jazz Center in 2018. She is author of five poetry collections: "Winter Place," "Child of War," "Paper Gods and Rebels," "Qua." La Morte del Tempo and co-author of Island Poetry and History of Chinese Immigrants on Angel Island,、um, and winner of the American Book Award. And Jenny, feel、um, free to correct any mutilation that I、uh, gave there in pronunciation of anything. I too、um, come from the same region that Maxine comes from, Toisan. And、uh, her poem brings up a lot of the things my mother used to say: the red, red, green, green, hong hong, look, look. That's when everything is so colorful; it's a feast for your eye.、Um, this country is a land of immigrants, and we all have arrived some way by hook or crook, either Shanghai or on slave ships as exiles or refugees. And it breaks my heart to see little toddlers thrown over the wall by themselves. Where is our humanity? We are all immigrants. This is the First Nations land. 
So this is the immigrant song. Who is the immigrant, you or I? Asleep between the wings of day and night, this bird caught in flight keeps singing her song, though no one sees her wings. I heard her lyric braided into the barbed wire above the cove across the sea at dawn where tall buildings reached for the moon, as if daring the stars to stop them. Take me to my freedom, they cry. I have no mother to birth me here. Take me to where the sun sets in the west, to where the moon shines on golden streets. Take off my soaked collar, my socks, my shoes. Take my memories and banished suitcase, which I left for tomorrow. What need have I for sorrow on this journey? What need have I for regrets or despair? Light passes between each echo, but this night of stones will not deny the border between my land and yours, between life and death. Hope is the only branch to which I cling. So what need have I for death? Thank you, Jenny. And uh, I am going to read the translation of this uh, deeply moving poem. Yiming zhi ge, shei shi yiming. Ni hai shi wo. Shui zai bai tian he hei ye de liang yi zhi jian. Zhe zhi zai fei qing zhong bei zu de niao. Yi zhi zai chang ge. 但是没有人看见他的翅膀。我听到他的歌，织入海湾上风的铁丝网。黎明时，越过海，到高楼伸向月亮之处，好像挑战星星是否敢来阻拦他们。带我去自由！我呼喊，我没有妈妈在这里。生我，带我去太阳在西方落下的地方，带我去月亮照在金色街道上的地方，拿走我湿透的衣襟、鞋子，拿走我留给明天的记忆和放逐的提香。在这个旅程，我何须悲伤，何须后悔或绝望？光。在每个回声之间传递，但是这个石头般的夜不会否认我与你的土地之间、生与死之间的边界。希望是我唯一紧抓的树枝。我何须死啊 ？Thank you. Thank you. I want to share one more with you. And I uh, was struck like everyone else, and I, I'm afraid to uh, cry because once I start, it won't stop. So I want to thank Maxine for uh, weeping for us. I was so struck by the spa shootings. Dao Yufeng was um, one of the ones of the eight who was shot and killed, and she. Her body laid unclaimed for a whole week until the Chinese American community in Atlanta got together and had a memorial for her. She was sending money home to her family and an ill mother, and she had no children, and she wasn't married. So uh, this poem is for her and the eight who were victims. Aromatherapy. Is it not enough to sew your jeans? Is it not enough to launder your shirts or cook your favorite cuisine? Is it not enough I melt your sore and aching muscles with the scent of jasmine or oil of sandalwood to titillate your fantasies of conquest? 
Do I trigger your lust with the suppleness of my small hands? When I rub the acrid jungle of hair over your sweating gland, does it arouse your savage fantasies? When you see the sign, aromatherapy spa, what sorcery ensnares you? What lust locks your groin with such abominable guilt that nothing can quell it but murder? What demon eviscerates your manhood and dooms you to hate? You think masculinity the sole privilege of whiteness and the calculus of a hot trigger, the only means to resolve your unholy obsession? So you satisfy your addiction to yellow flesh with annihilation? till your rage detonates in one bloody hot Georgia orgasm, exploding every fetish, every assault of memory, every rape and massacre from Hiroshima to Vietnam and back? No, it's not enough to sew your jeans, launder your shirts, cook your dishes, or massage your impotence for tips. In one final deadly spree, did you think you'd break free? Now the mirror shattered, your beard's all wrong. You thought you were strong, but you don't matter. Now you're caught in the gauntlet of condemnation, legs parted like a pig at slaughter, your white meat trembling under the hot spit of craven prisoners who lie and wait for you. And I shelter in place for the long haul. It's a simple revolution to resist the terror of your hatred for me. Time is the train my grandfather's built and the train that left me here. Their ghosts still mine the Sierras. No one shipped their bones or the ashes of the 50 or so Chinamen massacred at Rock Springs back to their homeland. I can see them on a cold winter's night with pickaxes frozen in their calloused hands. No one told them there was no such thing as freedom. Mother taught us to hide behind our shadows, not knowing that her journey would continue without end. She taught us to survive, knowing that each moment we suffer is impermanent. She showed us how to fly, knowing that the center of gravity is within us, no matter where we fall. She taught us to wait and to listen, to know when our hour arrives. So I am sheltering in place for the long haul. It's a simple revolution to resist the terror of defeat for our daughters. If the canary doesn't sing, it's time to spread our wings. Thank you. Thank you, Jenny, for such a powerful poem. Thank you. And um, yeah, next poet I will introduce is um, poet Michael Wall. And uh, um, San Francisco poet Michael Wall is a 2020 Berkeley Lifetime Achievement Awardee. His book include a poetry and a protest from Emmett Till to Trayvon Martin, uh, it's by Norton, published by Norton, the Emmett Gaddon of Funk and the We Are All the Black Boys. His many awards include San Francisco Library Laureate, Creative Work Fund Award for his um, multimedia project, Tracing Poetic Memory, National Endowment for the Arts Fellowship and uh, um, a Gwen, Gwendolyn Brooks, Brooks Sig Significant Illinois Poet Award. So Michael, please. Thank you, Trin. So I'm gonna start with a poem that was written over a year ago, well, now a year ago in response to the violent attacks against Asian people in San Francisco, and also around the world, um, just in the kind of early stages of the COVID-19 crises. And Shun and I were asked by the Chinese Cultural Center to participate in its web-based artist initiative um, in, res in response to the pandemic. That, that initiative was called, How Are You Processing? And a number of artists participated in that. And so the premier reading of this poem took place as a selfie video because we were also asked to shoot a video. And it, I shot the 
video on the stairs of the Asian Arts Museum with the bronze guardian lions in San Francisco City Hall in the, in the background. So you can find that video and the text of the poem at our Two Languages, One Community website. It's called To Your Salient, Who Attacks Us All. Do you call yourself God-fearing, devoted to do on to others? Does your God condone your violence, your ignorance, your corruption? Does your God hate your neighbor like you do? Does your God share your love for prophets bearing false witness, fueling your grievance fever? Do you swallow the lies they regurgitate? Do you really need a reason? Are you truly a true believer of both God and golden calf? Does the all knowing know you? Do they love you as you are? Does it matter that they are watching your naked depravity? Do you pray before you pray on innocence in this guilty world? Do you have your God's blessing or, you, or are you as godless as you seem? Did your father teach you to beat, demean, and maim? Is he proud of your cowardice? Does your mother say, well done, son? Did they train you in backwardness? Do you feel bigger in your smallness, content with acts of uselessness? Is your inner bully seething still beneath your concealed surface? Are you comforted in your criminality, stupefied by superiority, simply insane or lost? Who are you? Thank you, Michael. Um, now I'm going to read my uh, Chinese translation of Michael's poem. And this is a very important poem. Um, I, trans uh, I actually traveled from China to here at the beginning of the pandemic. And, and uh, that's where all of those terrible incidents began to happen. And uh, Michael wrote this poem, I immediately translated. Um, we've been presenting it in many events. Um, so, 是攻击你们的人你的上帝会认同你的带着假见证的让你的愤怒不平不断发烧的所谓先知的爱吗你在乎他们看着你赤裸的堕落吗干得好儿子吗Thank you. Thank you, Chun. I'm going to um, finish with a poem. It's called What Not to Do, an Unfinished Poem. And the poem includes unfinished in the title because it lists Blacks who have been unjustly killed by the police, and that obviously has not stopped. And in an effort to ensure that this is not a forgotten act, uh, this poem continues since 2018 to 
name the victims and recount the way they were killed and the circumstances that led to their senseless murder. Um, of course, it doesn't name all of them because the list is unfortunately too long. I'm gonna share a three minute excerpt. It's about a third of the poem. It takes over 10 minutes to read the entire poem. And Chun has also translated this poem into um, Chinese. Uh, the English version of it will appear in Obsidian, the literary and art journal this spring. And an earlier version of it can be found in the San Francisco Public Library Poem of the Day series created by the uh, former San Francisco poet Loria Kim Shuck. What not to do, an unfinished poem. Breathe, Eric Garner choked. Sell, Lucy's. Resist to death. Stand, Amadou Diallo in vestibule. Carry wallet, look out of place. Act suspicious, 41 fired, 19 bullets kill. Drive, Walter Scott with broken tail light shot in back. Park China Hagraphy on side of road. Talk on cell on side of road. Shot on side of road. Drive Philando Castile with broken brake lights. Carry legal firearm. Announce you have a gun. Shout not reaching for gun. Shot five bullets, two to heart. Approach. Oscar Grant, the police, beg not to shoot, nil shot anyway, in back. Fail, Sandra Blonde, to signal, act to uppity, found hanging in cell. Carry Tamir Rice, toy gun, shot with real bullets. Carry Remain Bisbon, prescription bottle, shot two bullets to torso. Not carry Keith Lamont Scott, a gun when told to drop it, shot. B, Natasha McKinnon, schizophrenic. B, superhuman, stunned while shackled, 50,000 votes to death. B, Michelle Shirley, bipolar while driving, 30 bullets, eight to chest, back, arms. B, John Crawford, an imminent threat. Shop for Walmart air rifle. Carry Walmart air rifle at Walmart. Talk on cell phone at Walmart. Shot with real bullets at Walmart. B, George Floyd, a suspect. B, a six foot seven black man. B, claustrophobic, asphyxiated knee on neck while handcuffed. Call Carlina Lyles, police while mentally ill, shot seven bullets. Fit Jordan Baker, the description, shot. Flee Freddie Gray, unprovoked, spine severed in custody. Run Stephen Clark, the grandmother's yard. Carry cell phone, shot. 20 bullets fired, eight hit primarily in back. Jog, Amard Arbery, shot, two bullets kill while hunted. Play, Atiana Jefferson, call of duty in bedroom. Little Zion watching, shot. Sleep, Brianna Taylor in bed, shot, eight bullets kill. Sleep, Richard Brooks, at Wendy's, flee for daughter's birthday, point the taser over shoulder, shot two bullets in back. Walk Elijah McLean home, look sketchy, play music, wear ski mask, shop for iced tea, carry iced tea, act crazy, cry can't breathe. Beg to go home, be superhuman, be anemic, be suspicious, be on something, be undermined, choked to death, breathe. 
So we are going to have another musical interlude, interlude from Tammy L. Hall. Tammy? Thank you, Michael. This is a, a work, a composition in progress that I wrote um, upon the uh, learning of the killing of Ahmad Arbery. And right now it's just entitled Requiem.
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Tammy. Uh, I, I, we, I think we all feel our heart is filled with love and you know, we are being healed. And I also want to thank you for your beautiful words about love at the beginning. And I, I feel we get um, the poet and the musician and, uh, in one of you. <laughs> thank you. So our next amazing poet um, is Afa Weaver. And you, when you hear his bio, you will know what I mean. Um, Afa M. Weaver began reading the Dao De Jing and studying Tai Ji Quan in his 20s and has worked in translation projects focused on living Chinese poets. He is a recipient of the Gold Friendship Medal from the Chinese Writers Association in Beijing and received the 96th Medal from Taiwan's Chinese Writers and Artists Association in 2019. He received his MA in Creative Writing from Brown University. Dr. Jing Xipeng, Professor Emeritus at National Taiwan University, gave Afar his Chinese name, Wei Yafeng. Afar, please. Thank you, Chun. Um, I'm happy to be here to lend support. Uh, Chinese culture has been so important to me for most of my life, uh, going on five decades, and has propelled my work as a poet and uh, helped pull me back from the brink of death with a life-threatening illness. So whenever I can, I try to show my support. And um, I went to Taiwan on a Fulbright to teach in 2002, and when I came back, I decided to hold uh, conferences on Chinese poetry and uh, uh, as an effort of uh, showing my gratitude. And so I'm here today to show my support. I'm just so deeply uh, saddened and frightened by all that's been going on. Um, this first poem is entitled Being Chinese. I had been in Taiwan for one year studying Mandarin and I came back, or well, eight months, I should say, eight and a half months. And when I came back to the States, everything seemed quite strange. Being Chinese. In Los Angeles airport, I sit stunned by the English. Letters, harsh things with no stories I know. The food smells dead. Metal forks and knives set for making war against food. I am undone and done again broken off from narratives of birth and being, of limits broken by the genius of slaves. I stand here where I was born and the mask wait for me. Thank you, Alpha. And I also have the honor to translate this poem into Chinese. I, I have to tell you, I just could not stop laughing when I was translating this poem. I feel Afa had to find the words I couldn't find or feels like being Chinese sometimes. So, Dang Zhongguo Ren, Wo Zo Zai Luo San Ji Ji Chang, Bei Ying Yu, Ji Huan, Zi Mu, Shi Mei Yo Wo Zhi Dao de Gu Shi de Chu Cao Zhi Wu, Shi Wu, Wen Qi Lai, Xiang Si La, Jin Su Dao Cha Men, Zun Bei, Dui Shi Wu, Fa Dong, Zhan Zhen. 我灭而又生，脱离了出生和存在的叙述，和被奴隶们的天才打破的限制。我站在我出生的地方，面具等待着我。Thank you, Chun. And uh, this poem is uh, one that's from my uh, collection, The Government of Nature, um, where I just sort of focus on the really deep significance of uh, Chinese culture to my work and my life in dealing with the central trauma of my childhood. Washing the car with my father. It is the twilight blue Chevrolet, four doors with no power but the engine, white wall tires, no padding on the dashboard, 
the car I drive on dates, park on dark lanes to ask for a kiss. Now my hand goes along the fender, wiping every spot. The suds in the bucket, my father standing at the gate, poor and proud, tall and stout, a wise man. A man troubled by a son gone missing in the head, drag racing his only car at night, traveling with hoodlums to leave the books for street life, naming mentors the men who pack guns and knives, a son gone missing from all the biblical truth. Ten talents, prophecies, burning bushes, dirty cars washed on Saturday morning. He tells me not to miss a spot, to open the hood when I'm done so he can check the oil, the vital thing like blood, blood of kinship, blood spilled in the streets of Baltimore, blood oozing from the soul of a son, walking prodigal paths leading to gutters. Years later, I tell him the stories of what his brother-in-law did to me, and he wipes a tear from the corner of his eye, wraps it in a white handkerchief for church, walks up the stairs with the aluminum crutch to scream at the feet of black Jesus. And in these brittle years of his old age, we grow deeper, talk way after midnight, peeping over the rail of his hospital bed as we wash the twilight blue Chevrolet. Thank you, Afa. And uh, this is actually the, the first poem I trans translated of Afa. And, and I discovered his poetry. I was so deeply moved by it. Um, so here is the Chinese version. He Fuqing, Yixi Xi Che. Yiliang, Mulan, Se de Xue Fulan, Si Shan Men, Zhu Le Ying Ting, Meo Qi Ta Dong Ying. Bai Quan Lun Tai, Yi Biao Pan Shang, Meo Dian Zi. Wo Yue Hui Shi Kai de Che, Ting Zai, Hei An de, 车道上请求一个吻以搬枪弄刀的男人为食有血一样重要的东西血缘的血白色手帕里Thank you. And uh, this third last poem stands alone. It's not in any of my collections. I was in Taiwan teaching in 2002 on the Fulbright appointment. At the end of the semester, I decided to go into the mainland on my own. And I went to see the Great Wall and I had not fully recovered from congestive heart failure, which I contracted in uh, 1995 but um, I was gradually building my health back um, with the instruction from my uh, teacher with Tai Chi and so on. Climbing China's Great Wall. 
This wall is a great stairway. Walls are things that shoot up, keep out, line the places where we mark the halls that carry our names. The bust of this one and that one, this history is in the hard labor of hearts, thrusts of piston and valve. I sit down at the first house, dizzy at the view over the wall, the tourist town below us, and buildings made old by the deliberate hand of business, not the rain, the sun, the untold billions of raindrops and teardrops of soldiers wishing for the lovers they left behind, untended crops, mothers weaving braids of grief in their hair. A little old woman bounces past me, leaping the brief weld of stone to stone, the stairs, the legend and skeleton of the wall where white cranes dance in pairs. Thank you, Afa. I, I give you the Chinese version of this um, poem. Pandan Zhongguo Changcheng. Zhe Qiang shi yi ge zhuang guan de jie ti. Qiang dou shi xiang shang mao, xiang wai du de dong xi. Wei rao wo men biao ji wei li tang zhi di. Na cheng zai wo men ming zi de di fang, zhe ren he na ren de ban sheng xiang. Zhe li shi shi zai xin de 新老中活塞和阀门的推动我在第一个城楼坐下晕眩于墙外的风景我们下面的旅游小镇在被刻意的经营之手做旧的建筑里不是与太阳是未被技术的树以异迹的士兵们想念他们留下的情人无人照看的庄稼和在头发中编织着悲伤的辫子的母亲的泪滴和雨滴。一个小妇人从我身边跳过，她越过石头与石头石头的焊接、阶梯、城墙的传奇和古骸、白鹤成群、成双的舞蹈之地。Thank you. Thank you, Chen. Thank you, Afa. Thank you, mm. Michael. Is 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 um Michael here? Michael Young here? I don't I don't see him. Oh, yeah. so oh here there he is. I see him. He is here. Hey, Michael. Oh, Michael. Oh, you made it. Welcome. So yes uh we are just uh, so glad so we have um we are going to present um our um california poet laureate um l young's poem by his son michael young so l young's books include poetry fiction essays anthologies and musical memoirs his many honors include wallace stegner uh, Guggenheim Fulbright, National Endowment for the Arts Fellowships, the Penn Library of Congress Award for Short Fiction, two American Book Awards, two Pushcart Prizes, two New York Times Notable Book of the Year um, citations, the Richard Wright Award for Excellence in Literature, and more. In 2005, Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger appointed him Poet Laureate of California. Michael, please. Thank you, everybody. Um, I just want to say it's especially poignant today because um, my father's entered the hospice stage. Um, he had a stroke several years ago, but I feel he's finally winding down. So. Um, it's it's a heavy it's a heavy period it's a heavy day and but I'd love to be here um, kind of paying tribute to him. Um, first of all, I wanted to start. I was been going through his just endless endless um, ephemera and memorabilia. But he has this. I don't know if you can see it, but it's um, a collection called Yardbird that he started in the seventies with Ishmael Reed. Mm -hmm. And if you look closely, it's just so beautiful. It's like one of the first you know multicultural literary periodicals that just exposed everyone from like 
the irascible Frank Chin um, and Sean Wong. Just two brilliant Chinese American writers. You can see Victor Hernandez Cruz. Anyways, there's wow. Zoom is so hard to kind of project photos, but I'm just tickled that I found this. This is probably uh, 1977 or so. So he, I mean, he was on the vanguard of of so much multiculturally. And uh, um, there's also a wonderful book by um, Jeff Chang called Who We Be, who's a local Chinese American um, Bay Area writer and music writer. And there's a whole chapter on this whole movement, um, kind of the before Columbus movement started about 40, 50 years ago. Anyways, I wanna read three, po three poems. Um, and I wanna start with one that I just recently, recently rediscovered and fell in love with called um, How Stars Start by my father. I don't ask to be forgiven, nor do I wish to be given up. Not entirely, not yet. Not while pain is shooting clean through the only world I know. This one. This is no Mal Waldron song or Marlena Dietrich epic in black and white, where to scrawl against the paradigms of time is to mean something benign, like dismissing present action or behavior, because I know and understand deep down, inside and beyond, that life itself is acting all of this out, this kamikaze drama. Cosmic, if you will, but certainly comic in a style so common as to invite confusion. Who am I now? What have I become? Where do we draw the line between being who I am and what I ought to be to my grief, spilling its veins that can't be sown, transforming their dark cells into semblances of relief. The stomach is involved, flesh itself, memories of an island doom that leaves no room for sense for sensitive assessment of truth about myself, which is the me that never changes. All roads lead back to stars, to starts, to where I started out, to stars, the fiery beginnings of our ends and means, our meanness and our meanings. There never was a night begun in darkness nor a single day begun in light. And that is where stars start. Okay. This next one is about this brilliant aunt. And this is leading up to the one that Chun translated about uh, his family. So it kind of goes hand in hand. And this is his Aunt May who um, started reading to, him, reading to him when he was two years old, you know, like Langston Hughes, and, uh, Lucille Clifton, all kinds of writers. And I think she helped spark the seed in my dad. Aunt, she talks too loud, her face a blur of wrinkles and sunshine, where her hard hair shivers from laughter like a pine tree, stiff with oil and hot combing. Oh, and her anger, realer than gasoline, slung into fire or lighted mohair. She's a clothes lover from way back, but her body's too big to be she. People just got to stand back and take it like they do Easter Sunday when the rainbow she travels is dry clean. She laughs more than ever in spring, stomping the downstairs, Saturday past work, looking into JC's pennies, checking out Sears and bragging about how when she feel like it, she's going to lose weight and give up smoking one of these sorry days. Her eyes are diamonds of pure dark space and the air flying out of them as you look close is only the essence of living to tell. A full length woman, an aunt, brown and red with stocking the years. And that is about his aunt May, my great aunt, yes. And finally, um, I'm gonna read a Sunday sonnet for my mother's mother. And this is for my great grandmother, um, Lillian Campbell. And sorry, I'm just showing a lot of photos today because I'm feeling kind of nostalgic. <laughs> um, but this is my Aunt Lil uh, Lillian Campbell, her husband, and my great uncle Jesse and farm in Ocean Springs, Mississippi. She is um, that intense look. She would be 101 at it. Um, she died in early 80s, early 1980s. 
And she actually hung up on Ronald Reagan when he called her to wish her a happy birthday for her 100th birthday, which uh, I've always been proud of, you know. Um, so here's a Sunday sonnet for my mother's mother, for Mrs. Lillian Campbell. Consider her now glow, arthritic, crippled in a city back room, far from the farm where she was born when King Cotton was still in bloom. She is as Southern as meat brown pecans or fried green tomato or moon pies, gathering now for eight decades, eons of volunteered slavery soften her size. Talk about somebody who's been there. This grand lady has seen, remembers it all, and could tell you about anyone, anywhere, in voices as musical as any bird's call. Loving her, it hurts to hear her say, my grandchildren, they just threw me away. And thank you, and my father thanks you, and gives his love. Thank you so much, yes. Michael. Thank you, so and thank you for having your father's amazing poem to us and for introducing us to your family. And, and now I translate uh, Elle's poem. I know who, who your great grandmother and this beautiful woman, the grand lady is. So I give you the Chinese translation. And by the way, all of the translations I did for our amazing poets today is gonna to be in an anthology that I'm working. Oh, and Michael um, or is helping me to edit and organize it. Um, so, yes. So, um, 给我母亲, 的母亲, 的星期天十四行诗, 至丽莲, 坎贝尔太太, 想想现在的他, 发光, 微微, 发旧, 关节炎, 残疾在城里的后房间里他的叹息伤心不行 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Trina. Thank you, Michael. That was wonderful. And um, please give our love to, to Al. We're so delighted to, um, to be able to include his words today. So our last poet of the, of the day is Chun Yu. And I just want to say that the anthology she referred to, the way we pulled this first of our um, series of events together around this issue of anti-Asian hatred is we just selected the readers who are part of that anthology. So every poet that you heard today is part of that anthology. And um, that'll be the first major anthology that Two Languages, One Community pu publishes. And here's the person who's translating it all. Chung Yu, PhD, is the author of the multi-award winning memoir, Little Green from Simon & Schuster, and a, his, a historical graphic novel in progress from Macmillan and more. Her work is taught in world history and cultural classes. She is the recipient of the San Francisco Arts Commission Cultural Equity and Individual Artist Grants, and is a 2020 YBCA 100 honoree for creative change makers and community leaders. Chun holds a BS and a MS from Peking University and a PhD from Rutgers in biomaterials and was a postdoctoral fellow at Harvard MIT joint program. Her, her website is um, chunyu.org. I encourage you to, 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 to go there. 
Go ahead, Shun. Looking forward to hearing. Thank you. Finally, <laughs> I got to read my own poem. Uh, I'm <laughs> just so excited. And uh, so I am a first generation immigrant. And um, when I first came to this country, I didn't know much about the history uh, of, of uh, Chinese immigration history. And uh, but I learned, and I learned how hard it was for the for our people here. And I'm working on a graphic novel with the artist actually who designed this amazing uh, logo and an image for us, the, the tiger and the panther image. And his name is Arnie Jingai Wang. He's one of the first and a very important Chinese um, American animator who, who did Dora the Explorer uh, and the uh, Bing Sprouse Emmy Award winning and, and, and animator. So we're doing graphic novels and uh, animation for uh, his family's 100 year, more than 100 year immigration history to here. Uh, and also a flying tiger, the legendary flying tiger story. So um, I love um, the lighthouse at the Marine Headlands at, at Point Bonita. And something really just draws me to it. And it's only after I wrote the first draft of this poem called The Lighthouse, I learned about the history of the dark, long tunnel that leads to the lighthouse. Um, it, it was actually carved through by Chinese uh, laborers after they built the railway. And uh, at that time, nobody wanted them. And there was a Chinese Exclusion Act. And it, this is an extremely dangerous job nobody wanted. But they were so good with hand tools so they dug through it, um, and um, and then uh, you know, hence the lighthouse standing on the tip of this continent. So I give you this poem, the lighthouse. An iron door opens to a dark tunnel through a giant rock, chiseled a long time ago by bare hands and hand tools, hands that came from across the ocean. Hands that chiseled through the continent, hands that built the railroad, Trans America. A land these hands touched deeply, a land these hands died for, a land these hands survived, a land these hands grow to love and wanted to make home. The headland of the continent. America, a giant dark rock probing into the vast water. One side, the raging ocean, the other side, the calm bay. Entering the tunnel, the narrow pass, my mind engulfed by darkness and the unknowing floats in the suddenly edgeless universe. All senses seem lost, except one, that the world is split. One side, the homeland, one side, the land of home. Until after arriving at the tunnel, I see on tip of the rock, the end of the headland, bare in rain and wind, fog and the cloud, sun and the moon, is the lighthouse standing above the raging Pacific like a heart beating to shine for both shores. And I want you to know for decades, due to the Chinese Exclusion Act, all of the Chinese men who managed to come here were separate from their mothers, sisters, and wives, and children in China because it doesn't allow um, them to bring them. And so it's in the World War II, my friend um, Ani Jian Wang's father and the uncle both fought in the US Army. And, but, and, and also uh, Ani's mother um, war in China and, and fending for themselves. Uh, during the war with, with, without being allowed to come here until after the war. So I just want we, us to all remember that history and uh, remember 
we need to move forward and we need to acknowledge the, our ancestors that came here first. So the Chinese version of this poem, 灯塔, 铁门打开, 黑暗的隧道, 穿过很久以前, 以罗手和手把工具, 绝通的巨石, 来自大洋彼岸, 卓吉, 横穿新大陆, 修成太平洋铁, 太平洋铁路的, 辛劳之手, 深深触摸过的大地, 为之而死去的大地, 幸存与思的大地, 已然爱上了大地, 期望成为家园的大地的夹角, 巨大黑暗的岩石, 每周大地的夹角, 深入广阔的水域, 一侧是汹涌的大海, 一侧是平静的海湾, 进入狭隘的隧道, 脑海被黑暗与无名吞噬, 突然漂浮于宇宙无边的宇宙, 万感顿失, 唯纯一念, 世界是分裂的, 一边是故乡, 一边是家园, 直到走出隧道的尽头, 才豁然而见, 夹角之端, 岩石之上, 落入在风和雨, 雾和云, 日和月中, 是伫立于汹涌的太平洋之上的灯塔, 像一颗星, 为此岸和彼岸, 无尽的跳动闪耀. The next poem I will present is called The Map. And this poem has an incredible history behind it. I first read it, I think, in, in Maxine Hawkinson's Veteran Writers Group, uh, which I have been with for, for many years. And thanks to Maxine for inviting me for being there. And then last year, um, my mother had a stroke um, right before, uh, the year before last year, 2018. Um, my mother had a 2019, uh, <laughs> it's been such a long year. And uh, my, uh, I had to cancel my event with the Chinese Culture Center a few days before and uh, landed in China in 24 hours. And, and this poem uh, um, I wrote for my parents um, because um, my father always brings out a, nap, a, a map whenever he hears I'm taking a journey, even just out of the door, a few blocks away to see my friends, he wanted to know exactly where I was with my mom, so they will look. And uh, so I you know, was able to see my mom and uh, then the Chinese newspaper, um, Tsinghua Daily um, published this poem. Um, and I brought this poem with my father to my mom, um, um, to her hospital bed and then a few months later, we rescheduled the event um, for Chinese New Year of last year. So to fulfill that promise, I crossed the ocean during the early stage of the pandemic. We did the event in the gap just before the lockdown of, uh, of here. So, so many of us, I, mean, I have not seen my parents ever since. So many of us, us are heartbroken, are separated from our beloved families. So I want to give you this poem, the map. Also this poem is acquired by the Arian Press, uh, one of the fi finest fine press in the world, uh, a treasure of San Francisco. And they acquired to publish for this year's graduates, um, our, all of our students um, in end of the May. And so the map, The map. When I was born, your bosom was a map. I occupied all of it in your cradling arms. When I began to walk, your eyes sight was a map. I learned my steps, toddling and waddling in your adoring gaze. When I started school, your mind became the map. I ventured out and back from morning to night in your unceasing care. When I grew up and left home, 
from hometown to other towns, home country to other countries, your heart became the map. I searched far and wide, high and low, for my direction and a place in the world, in your loving thoughts. Each time I set out for a journey, you asked for my destination, studied an open map, accurately locating the point of my being. Then one day, you picked up a magnifying glass, eyes moving closer and closer, hands trembling more and more, finally at a loss, no longer seeing clearly the lines and the points on the map. You hold me in your heart. Growing older and older, you can now only walk in my eyes sight, fumbling steps, every trip outside and adventure. From now on, I will walk by your side so you can lean on me when we are at a loss, not knowing where to go. Love is the map. Map. 刚出生时，你的怀抱是一张地图，我是那地图的全部，在你的怀抱中。刚走路时，你的目光是一张地图。我在那地图中摇摇学步，在你的注视中。上学时，我走出了家门，你的脑海是一张地图。我在那地图中招出木龟，在你的牵挂中。长大后，我离开了家，从故乡到外乡，从祖国到异国，你的心。是一张地图，我在那地图中摸索方向，寻找位置，在你的想念中。每当我开始一个新的旅程，你总会打开一张地图，询问我的去处，时时准确的找到我的所在。后来，你拿起了放大镜，眼睛。离地图越来越近，手抖得越来越厉害，终于茫然中，你已经看不清地图上的点与线。我在你的心里渐行渐慢。有一天，你只能在我的目光里蹒跚。每一次出行都是一场冒险。从此，我将把你搀扶在我的臂弯。当我们茫然不知所向，爱是一张地图。Again, when we are at a loss, not knowing where to go, love is the map. Thank you. 那，对，谢谢。那 ，we we give you our amazing Tammy Ho again, right? That's right. <laughs> Thank you, Chun. I am inspired immediately by you uh, in the moment. And for for all of us to take it, however we can, love is the map. Thank you, Tammy. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Thank you so much, Tammy. So much thank love. You. And thanks to everybody for their most uh, heartwarming comments and uh, support of our event. And um, we are going to take uh, a few minutes to, to answer some questions, I think. I, I actually haven't had a time to look at the questions. Um, okay. Gathering the questions for us, and I—they're gathering the questions for us. So, first question: <laughs> name, title, from Torinda Mikhail asking Afar, where is your book? Um, and your your names of your book and title. Oh, the um. The City of Eternal Spring um, has a uh, being Chinese and uh, the government of nature has um, washing the car with my father. And they're both from the University of Pittsburgh Press. Great. And uh, another question from Kimi Sugiaka asking if, uh, what was it about Chinese culture that moved you become a translator of poems and a lover of China. <laughs> oh, I was, I was very young and uh, wanting to, uh, just to get my poetry going and get a foundation. And when I started um, reading the Tao Te Ching and, and doing Tai Chi, I was about 26 or 27. And that gave me a foundation. So my, my work as a poet and a writer you know, is, is sort of, is based on my participation in Chinese culture, and uh, it has allowed me to overcome many challenges. So that's how that's how my love of the culture is grounded. You know, it's essential to my life, and uh, I'm one of my uh, teachers. I'm a Taoist disciple, so I, uh, I I've come I've gone deep inside the uh, practice, and so it's it's my spiritual life. You know? Well, you are. 
amazing of uh, in your in in I mean you have many Chinese uh, I, I think it didn't go as far as you do in learning the culture and I was just so impressed by what you have done and you are a brave man and you have visited the Great War too. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Uh, Chinese has a saying, if you haven't reached the Great War, you are not a good man. <laughs> so uh, just to inspire everybody to go there when the pandemic is over. One of the questions is uh, asking us to speak more about two languages, one community, right. and the conversations that led to the birth of this project and the lessons we learned. This is from Vida K. And um, I'll just kick it off by saying that when, when Chun and I first met, as she said, was at a reading. And when she came up to me after the reading, I kind of soon after I let her know I always wanted my poetry to be translated into Chinese. This is like the seventh language that I've had my um, poetry translated into. And at this point, far more of it than any of the other languages, including um, German, which was the, the second language. But the thing is, is that as she said, soon after we started collaborating, her translating and me doing editing of her work, what we found, and this was not new for me, but it was deeper than before, is that when you're being translated, you have to really go deep into both cultures. You know, if, the, if you and the translator are from different cultures, you have to go deep into both cultures to capture the poetry and the meaning of what you're writing. Um, a good example of this is that uh, we both wrote poems about our mothers. And that was something that we looked for at the beginning. What commonality can we find? And I have a poem called Black Stars, a very short poem that Chun translated. And it refers to my mother being referred to um, as Shinola. Kid, she used to get teased for being very, very dark skinned. And when, um, when Chun was translating it, uh, she let me know, and I, I had not heard this before, that the shoe polish Shinola, which Americans are very uh, familiar with, in China, it was a it had become it's a luxury item um, for sh you know for jewelry and um, it's the same company, and so she really had to to find a way to translate that in a way that would be understood not just in America but by um, the Chinese culture as as as, as well. Thank you, thank you, Michael. And um, yes, um, so. Yeah, this is amazing journey for, for both of us, um, you know, because it really helped me also focus on connecting the, the, the two languages and, and the cultures and many communities that's beyond the two languages. And, and uh, I, I feel we are uh, building a movement here because um, actually bilingually English next to Chinese is really, really published here. Here and um, but Jenny has uh, edited one um, poetry book of the um, Andrew Island poems of, of the early immigrants and um, and that was one of the very successful example. But I heard at the beginning they, they couldn't find, find a publisher. But then the poem uh, the collection becomes really uh, successful and then they are uh, formally published and and uh, what thinking about English and Chinese are. Uh, the two most spoken language in the world, the sheer amount of population that speaks those two languages. And I, I want this to happen more. And uh, miraculously, starting with a map, uh, actually last year, the poem of the day of San Francisco uh, Public Library published it um, side by side, English and Chinese. And then now a few magazines in America had accepted my poems um, in Chinese and English, which is something they never have done. And so it is true for, for Arian Press. They're so excited to print the poem in, in Chinese as well. And, and so I think uh, we, we could build on this. And many Asian languages are not really very much represented here. And I think it's pretty common to print English and, uh, and uh, for example, Spanish or uh, English and German po poems next to each other. So, so we, we invite you to, to join us in this effort. And so I think this is definitely growing and it, this is 
a very important time, the time to do it. We, we, we to our community. There's a Thank question you. here that's addressed that's addressed to everyone, but before answering, I just say that the thing is, is that we went from working on our individual work to realizing that the same type of conversations that we were having could take place in the um, African American and the Chinese community, for instance. So this really as a way of getting conversation and meaning taking place between different communities. Um, there's, a, there's a question here from Alyssa Noel, and it's to everyone. And um, how do you balance being a writer with being an educator, work life? Also, what suggestions do you have for writers of social justice and culture, given the current events impacting many communities of color, violence, gentrification, and more? Um, and why is it important to study another culture other than one's own? So there's a lot there, but we don't want to open this up to all the different um, writers here, just chime in. Well, I think there for one thing, to balance all of it as a, any kind of artist, you can't be uh, motivated by profit or money. You really have to be motivated by your love for whatever language, your love for art, painting. And uh, for me, uh, I've, you know, you, you do just everything, you know, like you can't juggle everything but you, you focus on your passion and devote and dedicate and be committed as much as possible to your passion without letting everything go by the wayside. And that's the hard part. A lot of artists just let everything else fall by the wayside. And once that happens, then you can't do your art. You can't do your writing. For me, I had to be an educator and I love teaching. So I didn't see it as a, any kind of sacrifice. But now that I'm retired, um, I, I thought I would have more time for writing, but I spend a lot of my time uh, caring for my grandkids. So <laughs> I try to balance that and instill those values in them. So why don't somebody else handle um, some of the other aspects of those questions? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? Yes, I have always been a, uh, a teacher and a writer. And, uh, and uh, I have had other jobs, but I found that um, being a teacher uh, did not conflict with being a writer. Uh, the writer is also teaching constantly. Um, the only problem is making time uh, for the writing. Uh, your question had to do with, uh, in, a, in this time, uh, how, how are we, the way I understand the question is, how are you being an artist and uh, a uh, uh, activist for social justice and for peace? Um, I, I've always been um, wary that I not write propaganda, uh, but what happens is that, um, if you uh, write from your heart and, uh, and, and you write what you're interested in, even if it's personal, it will become political. Um, the, um, uh, a, a, a very important skill of a writer is to be able to write points of view. And, uh, and we even write, we write points of view, not just for ourselves. Uh, you know, I started writing just I stories. And then when I was about oh, 30 years old, I, I saw myself as being such a selfish person, uh, not a, a, a very good writer because I was not telling other points of view. So I worked very hard to be able to write characters who are completely not me. And uh, I, I could write from the point of view of men. I could write from the point of view of people of other cultures. And uh, in that way, uh, our art, uh, uh, it, 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 it encompasses everything. And, uh, and we are able to uh, write in a way that we cross borders. Uh, we, we 
get through from my skin into your skin and brain. And um, so, so that, that's sort of uh, uh, my uh, life and history as a, uh, a teacher and a writer. Thank you so much, Maxine. That's it. That was wonderful, Maxine. That for me, um, traveling in and and studying, I've had to ask myself that have led me in a in a in very intricate, sometimes gentle ways of getting to know myself on deeper levels. As I travel through Chinese culture, that's been very important to me. And I don't think I could have done that any other way. So I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you, Afa. And uh, yes, um, so do we have any other questions? I just wanted to invite Tammy also to participate in this as, a, as an artist, so she can also address this question if she wants to. Yes. Tammy. Yes, I, uh, <laughs> I'm here. Um, Hi. You know, Nina Simone said it is the artist's duty to create art that reflects the time in which we live. Um, so we, re we reflect the horrible and we don't forget the beautiful that's always waiting to burst through no matter what the expression is. Sometimes all we can do is just hold the space and be the witness, not, not an observer because that takes you out of the action. If you witness something, if you witness it, you are a part of the action. We know in metaphysics that the thing already viewed upon, already given a gaze, is, has already been affected because we looked at it, because we sent energy its way. Um, the older I get, the more I know this to be true. Performing for me is not about that. This is the gift that I have, this gift of music that I can share with you as my best self. It's not about profit, and Jenny spoke to that. Um, Maxine also spoke to that, and I wholeheartedly agree. There is no other way for me to express than to, than through music. It is, it's the best way that I can communicate any part of me with the rest of humanity. Um, and I hope that it's always in a healing, way uh and that's 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 all i can that's all i can speak to <laughs> about that that it's always healing uh yes we uh, illuminate the ugliness we don't raise it up but we have to shine a light where darkness is not even lurking anymore where it's so brazen and we still put the light on it so that eventually the light of love dissipates that and the beauty that's lying underneath, because I still believe it's there, can come through. And that's what I hope that I can contribute. Thank, uh, you. thank you, Thanks. Tammy. Thank you. There's one question here um, that I think is related to, your, to the answer that you just gave, and that is, and this person, Maria, says, I'm an artist and want to spread awareness through art. I'm, I'm having trouble finding ways to reach the people that need perspective shifts toward compassion and anti-racism. Question, do you all have any specific suggestions um, how to go about reaching those people through art? And I, I'll just kick it off by saying that, uh, I, first of all, I think everyone has to find their way of, their own way of doing that if they wanna do it. I, I'm not a believer in people having to do a certain, go about doing that in a certain way or someone telling someone how to go about doing that but in finding what works for you. And what, one of the things that works for, for, for me is collaborating with other 
um, organizations, uh, working with people who are involved in movements. Um, I write a lot, for instance, about police brutality, and I've really been driven to write about police violence um, since I was a kid. And um, but what I try to do now is to utilize um, connections not only in the arts but on, on on the legislative side of things, trying to collaborate with activists who are specifically focusing on that, um, using all the different ways to get at the issue that I'm concerned with, but really kind of concentrating on, like Tammy said, what do I do best? And for me, again, it's through my art. And I've been doing that for, for a long time. And it's important to get that art, to share it with people so that they can also um, see it as something that they can use, um, not only for their own enjoyment, which we want, we want audiences to enjoy our art, but we also want that art to be available to, to them, um, that they can use it in their own lives and in their own work. And that's one way that I see uh, going about doing it. And lastly, I like responding to what's going on at the, at, at the moment. And when something is capturing people's interests and imagination, it expands the number of people who are going to pay attention to it. So that works for me. Anybody else? Thank you, Michael. Um, and I want to also add to this. Um, and for, you know, if you, if, if you love art, if you're doing what you love, and as everybody else has said, uh, you don't calculate with it, because love is uncon unconditional. And uh, if you get love, that's, that's probably the best gift you can ever have. So think, if we think that way, and uh, so maybe it will help you to go on and, uh, and uh, to balance, uh, the balance will naturally come. And every one of us is different, but it will happen. You have to trust that. Um, also, I see Melissa, the last part of her question says moreover, why is it important to study another culture other than your own? I just want to tell you my childhood story. There is a poem I didn't have time to write, to read today, it's called Cotton. And when I was a young child, I learned about the black history in the world history classes in China. I grew up in the cultural revolution China was very isolated and I did not know, I never saw a foreigner before. And my dear grandmother, my mother's mother, and she, part of the time she brought me up because my parents had to, um, they were separated into different places. My father was sent to a place for re-education. So um, I actually, when I was young, I followed my grandmother to the cotton fields. We also had cotton in our region. So I understand cotton picking. When I read about the stories of, of the black people here, and I'm like, oh, I understand what they have, they, they went through. And, and I understand, uh, I imagine these young black children, they were picking cotton, and, uh, but they were snatched away from their family, their parents and their grandmother. But my grandmother, um, Every night she spin the thread, she uh, thread, and she, you know, sew clothes and shoes for us. And I understood intuitively the thread for the black children here were broken. And even like my country was going through a very difficult time, I understand I was still lucky to have my grandmother. So next time when we have more time, I will share that poem with you. Uh, it is very important. Had I not learned that, had I not known the history of the other race here, I mean, the, the black people here, I wouldn't be here today in this program. And I wouldn't have built the two language one community project with Michael. And yeah, so that's my story. That's cool. Anybody else before we, um, we're going to wind down now, make a few um, comments before we do. And going to ask all the artists to stick around for a group, a group photo. But um, did anyone else um, want to comment before we um, end this section of the program? Michael, I, I, I have another thought. Uh, in answer to that question about how to reach uh, the people that we 
that want to hear or, or read or participate in our work. Um, in, in the many, many years, decades in which I was writing with no idea of how to get published or how to get my work out there, um, I began to take a very long view. Uh, and I, uh, uh, I, I am working forever. Life is, uh, it, it will go on without me. And, um, and I, I, I wrote my work uh, thinking that I was writing differently from other people. And, uh, and then I decided, okay, if I cannot find a publisher, I will just make copies and, uh, and it will be there. And, and somebody will discover me a hundred years from now, thousand years from now, and it's okay. It goes along with a, uh, there is a, a Chinese tradition in which a poet, you, you can write all your poems and, um, and, and the miracle will come when you find one reader and this reader can come a thousand years from now. Um, so that has been my way of enduring the years of not being published and, uh, and not knowing whether I will ever be published. Um, the Chinese also believe in um, time in a way that, uh, that we don't. Uh, we go backwards and forwards and round and round in time. So when we read a poet or listen to a musician today, we bring him into existence a thousand years ago. It's a profound thought. You know, that, that was essentially Emily Dickinson's story. In her lifetime, she was never published. And now, I mean, I studied her. She was one of my MFA uh, writers that um, I had to do my dissertation on, and Toni Morrison. Um, so you just have to keep doing what you believe in and um, continue to, you know, move beyond your safety zone, move beyond your own community, travel, eat other foods, learn other languages, listen to other people, and, and they're no different than you are. We all want to be happy. We all don't like to suffer and uh, tap into our humanity because we are all the same underneath the skin. Yes, yes. And as artists, um, you know, seize whatever means of production you need to produce your own work, right? I mean, that's the, that's the time that we're in, in addition to reaching out to other people who are distributing and publishing. Um, Luis Rodriguez, when he submitted his um, book to, to, it was a major press that uh, they got back to him and said, uh, we're already publishing a Latino. And that's when he started Tia Chucha Press. And that press, by the way, eventually came back to him for a book. Um, so we have to use everything that's, a, that, that's available to us. Um, before we, before we um, end, is there anyone else who wants to comment on this particular question? Okay, thank you all. Oh, go ahead, Afa. No, I, I don't have much to add to it except to read translations, you know. When I read Dufu, I feel like I'm bringing him here, but I'm also traveling to him. So it's an exchange. I just love that. So. Yeah, I love that too. Um, and so I want to encourage everyone to go to two languages, one community.com. We do plan on doing more of this. Thank you so much to all the artists. Thank you so much, Michael and Chen. Thank you, Tammy, for bringing so much hope in, you know, and really grounding us in the space and, and time and, and all of that. I think this is definitely just the beginning. Um, I believe in artists so much. They're going to be the change maker. They're going to be our orators, you know, the mirror to our society. So, you know, we have so much hope. Um, and it's, it's been an incredible experience to spend, you know, the past hour, hour and a half here with everyone. Um, and I, I would love to invite, you know, all the artists and any audience member who would like to turn their camera on to take a group photo together. Um, you know, there's, you know, we peaked at around like a hundred or so audiences and it really felt like, you know, a group, you know, and, and this is the massive group hug that we want to do with everyone. <laughs> so okay, if we, so yeah, we just, we 
yeah, I think we just smile and look like we're about to take a photo and I hope some, someone will stitch it all together for us. <laughs> all right. I can do that. Yeah. All right, ready, set, smile. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you, everyone. We got it. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks thank for doing it. Greatly appreciate it, everyone. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, Chun. Thank you, Chinese Culture Center. <laughs>